He's the host of Crossfire on CNN. He's the guy that everybody knows. He's written 27 books, including the latest, which is available across Canada, Breakout. He would have been in the NFL if they could have found a helmet big enough for him. Is that true, Coach? <laughs> I don't think so, but it's true that in high school I had to get an extra large helmet ordered. Uh, great to talk to you. So who do you dislike the most? Because I should tell everyone you're a huge Packers fan. So who's the enemy for you, number one? Is it the Lions, the Vikings, or the Bears? Oh, the Vikings. Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, I like, the, I like the Bears. I think the Bears have had a wonderful and amazing history going all the way back to George Hallis. Uh, I think the Bears in the mid-'80s were an astonishing team. Uh, so I have a certain affection uh, in that sense, which for a Packers fan is a lot. Uh, and the Lions for so long weren't very good right. that you didn't, I didn't think about them much. Now they've come back and become a pretty darn good team. But, it, but for a long stretch there, uh, Detroit was not a very competitive team. And I think for most uh, folks who like the Packers, there's something about Minnesota that just gets you rolling. So let, let, let's, a hypothetical, you were president of the United States, the Vikings win the Super Bowl, and you got to have that, that reception. I mean, could you even do that as a loyal well, Packers fan? Of course. No, look, as president, you owe it to the whole country, uh, no matter how disgusting it would be, <laughs> uh, to smile, uh, you know, I mean, you, you might not want to serve anything, but you, you'd at least let them come in for the photo op. <laughs> that is a great answer. So, serious question now uh, involving uh, a team in the NFC as well, the Washington Redskins. Would you like to see them change the name of the team? No, I think it's silly. I mean, I think, I think running around trying to do this kind of uh, language behavior is, is goofy. Would you not say, Newt, that to some extent, you and I, uh, not being Native Americans, that maybe we shouldn't really get a vote, that how we see it may be very different than how someone else sees it? Well, look at the poor Vikings. I mean, if you go back in history, Vikings were people who went out and did a lot of terrible things. And yet here's this Minnesota team that both has a terrible record, and its name evokes a violent past. But here's the thing. So should they keep the name Viking? But has anyone come forward and said, you know, I, I, you, we don't like the name Viking. We're Look, offended if, by it. But you have a group of people. In, in, a country, in, a country of, in a country of 315 million people, uh, you can find somebody who wants to correct something every morning, uh, often noisily and loudly, and it doesn't matter. I mean, I would say to those folks, if they spent more time on practical problems, they'd have better lives. I'm, I'm not for the Cleveland Indians giving up their name. I'm not for the Atlanta Braves giving up their name. I think that there's a certain silliness in this kind of guilt politics of running around finding something new to be offended by. If you were the head of the American Olympic Committee, what would you tell one of your athletes who came to you and said, Newt, I would like to make some kind of political expression in Sochi about the treatment of gays in Russia. Uh, are you okay with that? What would you tell them? Well, what I would tell them is that this is an international movement uh, and an international moment of, co of competition and of brotherhood and sisterhood, uh, and that it's not particularly appropriate. Remember back many years ago, people who did a variety of things at, at, at the Olympic Games that were symbols of their personal behavior. You don't go to the Olympics because of your personal ideology. You go to the Olympics as a representative of your country, and you have some obligation, I think, to behave responsibly uh, on behalf of the American people who you represent. But the other thing is that you're representing an American people that do not believe the same way the Russians do. If you look at the American people as a group, sure. they do not believe in discriminating against gays, yet that's what's happening in Russia. So to some extent, you're representing the will of your people because uh, you have the chance so, to express so when your you're voice. In so were you in China? Should you have offended the Chinese government because it's a dictatorship? The Chinese hosted an Olympics. I, I mean, how, off, how far down the road do you go with this? Well, I, I, I guess that's a, a personal choice. But to me, the intrigue is you have the platform. We, and if you see a wrong being wrong... Now, I don't like to... I don't you like to, don't have... Go ahead. You don't have the platform as an individual. You, ha you have the platform because the people of the United States have you representing all the American people. If the State Department wants to do something on your behalf, that's fine. If the ambassador wants to do something on your behalf, that's fine. I just think the Olympics is a place to bring people together, not to find new excuses to drive them apart. Your buddy Ralph Nader has been on this show a few times. He's been arguing that the National Hockey League should ban fighting. 
Now, you, whether you watch a lot of hockey or no hockey at all, do you think that something like fighting uh, belongs in hockey? I, I'm not quite sure how you take it out. Well, I guess you penalize it the way you do in football. If the Packers are playing the Minnesota uh, I mean, Vikings I mean, look, and, I, I, and a, a lime, two linemen start to fight, they get tossed out of the game. Right. I, I personally think that one of the reasons I don't watch hockey as much as I could is I think that kind of stuff is, is silly and is destructive. But at the same time, you probably under hockey, uh, understand the culture of hockey vastly better than I do. Uh, and I'm not totally prepared to... Uh, frankly, have a definitive opinion. It's not something I, I feel strongly about. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, if anybody gets injured, that's a different story. And then there ought to be real liabilities. He's the host of Crossfire on CNN, and he'll be back to play a little game we call Next Question. We'll see if he can handle it. I don't think he can. This segment is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. Great food, great conversation. We'll see you tonight.